the immoral thing. Condemning an entire group of people is immoral. Now, after that, it's also hypocritical because we don't want to be condemned for the real or imagined crimes of other white people at some point in time, now or in the past or in the distant past or antediluvian past. So it is immoral to condemn an entire group of people because they're not all going to be anti-white. And then it is hypocritical to condemn an entire group of people because we do not want to be condemned on the basis of our birth for the crimes real and imagined committed by other Westmen throughout time. That's the immoral thing. Why is that relevant? Well, it's relevant because your audience, the people we need to bring over to white well-being, they have a basic bio-spiritual set of tenets that feels normal to them. It is from that that we develop what we call morality, what we call ethics. If you run in contradiction to those that basic sentiment of what is right and wrong, they are already inclined to reject you. Then you add on top of that, this audience that we need to reach of Westmen and their scores of millions, you run into something else that they hate, which is hypocrisy. If you look at the conservative movement, conservative content creators make their livelihoods. They drive their Jaguars and take their vacations with the money they get from pointing out the hypocrisy. Of course, there is no actual hypocrisy when it comes to anti-whites, but superficially there can be in many cases. So they make their living off of going to white people in our millions and saying, look at the hypocrisy. And white people come forward and they say, I'm disgusted with it and I will give you money to keep talking about it. So you will have two big shots against you if you go to the white public and you say, the problem is this entire other group of people, all of them. That's the problem. And will be better if they're just gone. Well, objectively on top of that, aside from... Now we talked about the audience and how they receive the message. Objectively, it's simply wrong. Not all of any group is anti-white. Furthermore, you can even take this specific group and you can point out the, a percentage of them and how they successfully work for their individual well-being by way of their group's well-being something that is admirable, something that we wish we were able to do. And you can, in theory, and even in history, have an environment where anti-whiteism, in our case, is impermissible, morally impermissible. Service to their individual well-being by way of their group well-being would look very different in an environment where the white population objected to, fanatically so, because it would be considered a supreme immorality, anti-whiteism. It, it would never be able to go. In fact, their service, and that's a percentage of an ethnic group, their service to their individual well-being by way of their group well-being would indeed serve white well-being because in that environment, that would be the best way to make sure that they are celebrated, that they are wealthy, that they are... Do you follow me? Are you bright enough to follow this, folks? Most people won't be. I'm afraid that's just what the outcomes have shown us. So we have the immorality of it, that impression it, it 
how it lands on the audience, the people we need to persuade, the people we need to convince to stand up against anti-whiteism. We have the hypocrisy of it. And we have the objective reality that it simply is not true. Now, you all can, people could sit around all day long and contemplate whether or not uh, objectively it is true or false or somewhere in the middle. But the bottom line is that any honest person, intellectually honest person, would have to admit to, and there are few and, and far between type people, the bottom line is that if you had a country of white people that felt that anti-whiteism was a supreme immorality, you would not have anyone from another group attempting to inflict injury on the white population. It's a preposterous notion. 